Hello everybody, so today we're going to continue our journey in Asia and get into Central Asian geography. And the area that we're talking about here is places like Mongolia, Nepal, Bhutan, West China a little bit, and the stands, things like Kazakhstan, um, Uzbekistan, places like that. The main feature here undoubtedly is the steppe. This is a large elevated grassland, lots of rolling hills, and it's absolutely huge. You see there on the map, it really kind of starts in parts of Hungary and the Ukraine, and then goes all the way into China. We're talking about an area that is actually 5,000 miles long. So this is pretty crazy, and it results in some really tough people that live in there, um, and we'll get into that. Uh, lots of pastoralists live here, people that still live, live with herds of horses and sheep and stuff like that. Really, really important and interesting enough, a lot of this area doesn't have a lot of roads either. Um, just wide open grassland. Um, other unique areas down over here, uh, you'll find the Tibetan Plateau. This is an area uh, that is completely above 12,000 feet. This is the highest area where humans live, barely, but we do live here. Uh, you also have the Gobi Desert area, which is one of the largest uh, deserts in the world, largest desert in Asia as well. Um, and it's an area that's spreading, and we'll talk about desertification in a moment. Um, and really what goes with desertification is the Aral Sea. The Aral Sea, which this map shows right here, this is an old map, was actually one of the main water sources in all of uh, Central Asia that is basically now gone. So we'll talk about climate change and overuse and stuff like that. Um, we also have the deepest lake in the world there, Lake Baikal. I'll show you some pictures of that as well. And also, um, the population isn't necessarily huge. It's tough to live out on the grasslands. So just think in your country that states like you know South Dakota, Nebraska, things like that have some big cities, but a lot of farms, and it's a pretty open area where not a ton of people live. Well, this is the same thing. Um, Mongolia actually has so few people. Uh, most of the population lives in and around their capital, and then outside of that, you're looking at an average of less than one person per square mile. So like my introverts of the world, maybe the steppe of Mongolia is for you. All right, so what do these steps look like? So this is the Mongolian steppe. These are these large rolling, okay, hill grasslands. Of course, horses are really, really crucial here. Um, this is a great example about what many people who live outside of their capital city, which is Ulaanbaatar, which is one of my favorite named cities in the world. Uh, on the left, and you'll see there, that is a yurt, okay, with the dog, and that is a, uh, you know, a temporary housing that they can move with their herds, depending on the time of the year, and you see on the right, the herds of sheep and, um, their horses, uh, of course, the Mongols are famous for their big run starting in the 1200s to creating the second largest empire in the world. You can feel free to look at my other videos on the Mongols if you'd like, but this is just talking about the environment of that area. But it's really tough and harsh and, you know, it's cold and there's not a lot of resources. And so the people that live in the steppe, I mean, look at about some of the toughest, toughest people in the world easily. Something else that happens in this world, uh, I have Mongolian golden eagle hunting. You'll actually see Kazakhs and Mongolians do this. Um, it's tough to hunt prey and get close enough with a weapon or something like that. And so they have actually taken to, and feel free to look this up. Uh, as you can see, golden eagles are huge. I mean, they can bring down a deer. That's how strong these guys are. And... Um, they are used by both the Kazakhs and Mongolians to hunt animals uh, in the elevated mountain areas in like the Altai Mountains and other mountain ranges that are in Central Asia. It's just absolutely awesome. Uh, feel free to look that one up too. Here is an example of a small farm on the Tibetan Plateau. You see up in the mountains here, of course, the Tibetan Plateau is right on the other side of the Himalayas, which is the largest mountain range in the world. Um, as you can see here, this is in the summertime, but in the wintertime, lots of snow, very, very cold, and just an overall tough spot to live. The Gobi Desert, of course, as you can see here, it's absolutely huge, large, rolling sand dunes. Uh, you actually do have some water in this desert, but most of the time it's actually snow that's been blown in all the way from the Himalayas, uh, to give you an idea just how big the Himalayas are. Um, and here's an example of the expanding rivers, or expanding, um, 
desert, and you see here this area slowly but surely being gobbled up by desertification. And another great example is the Aral Sea. Um, by overuse and uh, changing climate, you can see in 1960 how massive this was, and you see all those abandoned boats there. And then when we get up close to it, this is what it was looking like in 2014. And so pretty dramatic and terrifying change, if you ask me. And also in Central Asia, we get the cool Lake Baikal. This is the deepest lake in the world. Again, uh, 5,387 feet deep. I mean, nothing is even remotely close to this. It's basically a mile down, um, which is really, really remarkable. I mean, you actually have to take like a high-end submersible submarine to get to the bottom of this, you know humans like your high-end free divers might be able to get to about 300 feet so that gives you an idea of how much deeper this actually is and it's a really really interesting lake um, it has these beautiful corals and um, of course during the winter time it completely freezes over because we're up here in central asia and because it's so cold we get these cool seals like the fattest seals in creation as you can see here on the bottom one looks like a balloon um, when you're going through it or when it's going through the water. Really, really fascinating. And so again, that's just our brief little intro, give you a little sense of what Central Asia is like, some of the some of the highlights and main geographic features. Uh, I'll continue on. We'll get a little bit, that we're going to get, uh, our next one's going to be East Asia, so that's going to be a little bit longer. So hopefully you learned a little something here today, guys, and I will see you soon.